if you can, kind of maybe dive into some training principles now uh, that beginner to intermediates, just like the big ones that maybe you see uh, that that could stand out to you that mistakes that are being made that they can probably avoid, okay. fix, or work on. It, it depends what they're training for. So it's, we got to separate bodybuilding and strength, but they are both integrated, mm -hmm. right? So I'm a technique guy. Like I feel all weak points, even with any type of periodization model, still comes down to technical, physical, and mental. Those are three, you know, and that's probably true in business and everything else as well. Um, where I see the greatest downfall is in the technical aspect. And that's just simply because they just want to get in and do it. And sometimes when they're beginners, they need to just do that. Like the technique is going to be bad because they got to build that efficiency and they got to build the coordination and all the other stuff. But how do you build it by just reinforcing bad shit over and over and over again? You know, so I like the repetition or the, the, the dynamic effort method simply not for, for those athletes, not for the reason that people think, not because of the compensatory acceleration, static, you know, there are all those things, building explosive strength, force development, that has a place more for you, right? Where with them, it has more of a place for more first reps, mm. right? So if they're doing squats now and it's on a linear program, the way I used to do it is you would work up, maybe you had two heavy sets of five, two sets of three, um, maybe one, you know, on the, you know, starting of this, the peak phase, maybe five fives. Mm -hmm. But even at five fives, the first two reps might be really technically sound, but then it's gonna get heavy and you're just gonna kind of like um, muscle it up any way you possibly can. But the focus is at the same. So on five sets of five, you have 10 good technical work reps, right? And then as it begins to move down towards the peaking phase, it may be a heavy triple. Mm -hmm. You got two. Mm. You know, so the closer you get to the meat, you become more and more technically inefficient. Mm. But you become te technically more efficient with a heavier weight, mm. right? Because there's weight Six, changes yeah. things too. Yep. So that's kind of how that whole philosophy system periodization works. Beginners just need more technical reps. So if they have more sets, say 10 sets of and you gotta, the beginners are a little different because you gotta watch when they quit paying attention. Mm -hmm. It's not the fatigue, it's just they mentally check out. So it'd be great to have them do 10 sets of 10, but they're not gonna stay focused on their technique for that mm -hmm. long. If you're lucky, you might get five. Mm -hmm. Three is usually a pretty good number. So 10 sets of three, the weight's obviously not gonna be that heavy because they're not percent wise because the percent that you would program for them isn't really that percent. Mm -hmm. Because if you could put them in, you know, um, a suit of some kind that just in wraps or whatever that, that they could use that made them never miss break mm -hmm. technique. They'd all squat 200 pounds more than they could. Yeah. But they can't because they don't have the efficiency, they don't have all this other stuff. So you can't sit there and say that 60% is really 60%. Mm -hmm. It's not. So it's you, not, gotta, you yeah. gotta base it on that. So if they're doing 10 sets to three as part of their training, that's 30 technical reps in one day. You know, so mm -hmm. over you compound that over a month and there's 120 in a month compared to a different style of programming, you might get 10. That's work sets. That's not counting the warm up sets, which are also building technique. Mm. You know, so that puts it in there. Now, coming from a sport background and you have a sport background too, you took the movement that you have in sport and then you segment it down. Mm -hmm. right into you know a lineman might have first strip drills you know forearm shiver stuff like that so they, it, it gets stripped down segmented you know down into that and then you do hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of reps when does the coach allow you to stop doing it when the form yeah, breaks, breaks yeah. right so think of any other sport athlete outside of the gym how many technical reps are they getting done in the sport discipline that they do not just on the playing field for practice but in the drills that they do because the drills performed properly are segmented down mm -hmm. positions of that that get stacked together for that. We don't need to do that per se with the squat bench, but you can, you know, board presses and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. But for the technical part, it's really not that important. Mm -hmm. For a stronger person, it might be. Let's say that the top part of your lockout on a bench is a technical issue. Well, board presses, we're just working that part, plays mm -hmm. kind of a role in there. So I don't think they spend enough time on the techni technique of the compound movements. It can be debated how important it is on some of the other kind of stuff, you know. But I think it's important on everything, but I don't think you need to overanalyze a side raise or a push down. Yeah, yeah. But you should still feel those in the, move, in the muscle that you're trying to mm -hmm. train. Um, 
again, the, I mean, this is, it's training, but it's not, right? Because it's, they want a program, right? They want something like, how many sets should I do, yeah. you know, for chest? Well, what does your bench look like? Because that's mm -hmm. a prime mover there that even if, say, I don't think it's the best bodybuilding exercise, and, and, and I don't, okay? They're still going to do it. Mm -hmm. Right, so what's the safest way to do it? The most technically sound way to do it, or the in you know not technically mm -hmm. sound way to do it? So that still plays in there. Mm -hmm. And then if we fall into the bodybuilding point, um, full range of motion does make a difference. I mean, people it, people debate that you know full range to short range. I don't understand why you can't do both. Yeah, and I don't know why there needs to be a debate because both should kind of be implemented. But more importantly than all of that, you need to be able to feel the movement and the muscle you're trying to train. Mm -hmm. And if you can't, slow it down, become more technically efficient, and focus on the muscle, mind-muscle connection, whatever you want to call it, and then it's going to come in there. That's another thing that that group of athletes fail to do because they're so excited about training. This is the cool thing. They're so excited about training. You know, they, they just want to train like Rocky, man. They just want to like, drill, you know, they just want to go, 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 and just, you know, throw shit around. And that's great for the advanced and the, and the, and the intermediates to see. They lose a little bit of that. They get so caught up into efficiency and all this other stuff that they lose a little bit of that that high school kid that just wanted to fucking lift hard. Yeah, yeah. Right? Uh, and there's, there's yep. a balance, right? Oh, so sure. There's a balance, and that's why I like to blend those together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, guys, there's there's so much. And it's, it's even funny how you broke that down. Like, light bulb, every time I'm here, light bulbs go off. That's why I come here. Uh, but, like, as a coach, like, I coach lacrosse players now. And that's how we break things down. Mm -hmm. But it's like, at the same time, yeah, why wouldn't we do that for lifting at, at the same, mm -hmm. you know, at the same time? And and uh, yeah, I don't know. So I, I, I agree, and it's it's cool to, to be able to talk, uh, kind of get some feedback from that aspect. And, and I like um, even even where I'm at right now is I kind of feel like I'm overanalyzing maybe a little bit, and I need that that high schooler back myself. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it's just cool, but uh, I think there's a lot of wisdom that, that Dave kind of had talked about there, a lot of things to think about when it comes to variables outside of training, uh, with training. You know, I get excited and fired up when I'm here. Uh, so that's what we're going to do now. We're going to do some bench training. We're going to break down some technical aspects of it. He's going to clean it up. We're probably going to throw some weight around because why not? It's it's fun to do, and uh, it's going to be awesome. So I appreciate yeah, you, my thank man. You, thank thank you. you. And uh, make sure, well, obviously, where can they find you? Where, where's EliteFTS.com, okay. add under the bar <clears throat> on Instagram, and just EliteFTS. I'm not that hard to it's, find. It's big enough. You'll find me. Yeah. All right. So let's get to it. Let's have some fun. Yeah.